So I've mentioned here and there that I was a designer for Lululemon and I've gotten a lot of questions. So I thought it might be time for my very first story time. from the title this is gonna be my very first story time so I thought I would start with me designing for Lululemon I have mentioned this in snippets here and there um, on social media and on one time I actually pulled out a bin of some of the original designs for Lululemon like way back 20 years ago um, and people are like you need to do a video about this so I decided I'm going to do my very first story time you guys, some of the details of this might be kind of foggy because this was a while ago. I want to say it had to have been 1998, maybe? Late 90s. <laughs> I worked for a store named Blue Ruby, which at the time was just beginning to, and I actually went from store to store helping open up those stores. Blue Ruby is the brother of Aritzia. Aritzia was owned by the sister, the brother opened Blue Ruby and they also had a store called Hills of Carisdale. If you know, if you're from Vancouver, you know what I'm talking about. So I was um, an assistant manager at Blue Ruby and at the time I was still in design school and stuff like that. And one day a girl came in and she wanted to order a necklace. And in ordering the necklace and going through that whole process and stuff like that, we started talking. She asked me what I did and what I was doing, what my aspirations were, blah, blah, blah. And she said, you know, I'm a designer too and we are starting up a new company. Um, we don't, you know, it's, it was in the very, very beginning stages. And she was kind of like, why don't you come by and like meet the owner? So um, I went and met the owner who was at the time Chip Wilson. And basically I got hired. I got hired to be a designer at the time. Okay, like I said, my facts are kind of foggy, but if you guys were with Lululemon back in the day when it first started, I want to say it was on West 4th, um, the studio was upstairs. We were upstairs. It was a studio slash also store. That's where we like designed stuff, sold stuff, stored stuff, everything. Like it was just this upstairs, um, like one big room. We would pull out rolling racks and in the evening we would move the rolling racks and it would be a yoga studio as well. So um, when I got hired, I am not um, trained in fashion design or anything at all. I got hired as the graphic designer. So um, I did a lot of graphics uh, for the shirts. I did drawings for the shirts, um, graphics for like labels. I did the catalog um, and all this stuff. And there was two other girls who worked there at the time, Jackie and Shannon, and they were um, designers and they were also seamstresses I want to say because they would be cutting the pattern so we would work up there and then as customers would come in and out at the time it wasn't that busy you know we would also be on the sales floor as well which was really cool when I first started to kind of fill my hours as well Chip Wilson also owned a store called West Beach if you guys remember West Beach it was like surf and snow and skateboard uh, stuff um, so I would also do graphics for West Beach which was really cool and to this day that job was my highest paying job that I've ever had. Um, he treated me very, very well. He paid me very well. And for a young person, I wanna say at the time I was like 18 or 19 years old, I was in design school. He just like really trusted me and I feel like gave me the opportunity that I think most uh, business owners wouldn't really do. Number one, take a chance on someone who's not that experienced, but two, also pay me according to what I was worth. And I feel like nowadays you really have to fight for what you're worth. So I, to this day, I kind of felt like you overpaid me, um, but I feel like that really gave me a sense of um, I was worth my talent from the beginning. So back in the day when Lululemon first started, like I said, they would be sewing stuff, um, cutting out patterns, we'd be selling on the floor. And we, I think at the time, we only did like two of each size of each thing. Um, this was even before, I wanna say, they started um, sending orders out, you know, wherever it went overseas. Um, it was just really cool. I really felt like it was a family. And there was only three employees. And when we made the 
first, I don't know if it was the catalog or advertisements, uh, one of my best friends, who is also still one of my best friends now, Marin, she was a professional model. So she modeled our stuff for us. So she was kind of like our first Lululemon model. And I, I want to say we just paid her in pants. Marin, you can correct me on that one. I, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure we didn't pay her. I think she just got some pairs of pants or something. And at the time, very few people knew what Lululemon was. At the time, there wasn't any other like athletic wear brands or anything for women. I really feel like Lululemon was like one of the very first. People weren't wearing yoga pants and athletic wear just as everyday wear like they are now. So I really feel honored and I really feel like it was really cool to be a part of something at the very beginning and watch and see how it developed and then become enormous and huge. Um, so when I worked there, um, I think I left just as they were opening the first actual like store store. Um, people ask me all the time why I left Lululemon. Um, I left to go to Africa. I felt for a long time called to go to Africa um, and do missions and stuff like that. And I got the opportunity to go, so I decided to go. And I remember even at that time, the owner Chip saying, Jeannie, I really feel like this is gonna be big. It's gonna do really well. And he basically was like, I think you're kind of, you know, leaving a really good opportunity here. And I agreed. I said, I believe in this company as well, but I also really know that I'm supposed to go to Africa right now, so I really need to go. So basically he was kind of like, okay, but I cannot guarantee that the job is gonna be here when you get back because at that time I didn't know how long I was gonna go for or anything. So um, I decided to go and I guess the other question that I get a lot is do you regret leaving and I get this question a lot when people I think that's the first thing people ask when they find out that you know I was there at the very beginning um, people say do you regret like leaving because you would be like a billionaire right now um there are there's a very very small percentage of me where I'm like that would be cool obviously to have lots of money but then there's this other part of me which is the greater part of me where i feel like had i not left had i not gone to africa had i not taken the next steps in my life i would not have met my husband and i wouldn't have a family and the life that i have now would money help yeah but um I wouldn't have the life that I have right now. So no, I would never trade it for anything um, now. And another question I get is, do I still get paid for designs that I did back then? No, because um, the kind of contract that we had was everything I did was owned under Lululemon. So I wasn't like, I'm not getting like residual. I wish I was. I'm like, throw me some pants every once in a while. But, um, and since then the company has changed a lot. Um, I don't know how long ago, but I know they sold the company. So the people that I worked with in the very beginning, the owner and stuff like that, everything has changed and moved. Now, a really weird thing is like when I moved to LA, seeing like the Santa Monica store go up and seeing that logo that I drew so many times by hand, really weird. Seeing strangers that I don't know wearing Lululemon clothes is really weird because even though those are not my designs that they're wearing now and even though um you know it's so much time has changed there's a little part of me that feels kind of like it's one of my children does that make sense like it kind of feels like it's one of my babies like back in the day when Lululemon when I was working there and I was designing when I saw someone wearing one of my designs when I saw someone wearing something that I drew with my hands you know in my room um that was really weird because um they don't know me you know what I mean but I felt like they were wearing a part of me and so that part was really cool it was really weird so so to this day, I have not gone inside of a Lululemon store. Um, I feel really weird when people around me are wearing it. I don't know why. Like my sister-in-law wears a lot of Lululemon stuff. Um, you know, everyone wears it and I just feel weird. I don't know why. I think it is because I feel like it's a part of me that's no longer a part of me. It's almost like breaking up with an ex, I guess, and you just feel like I can't go there. You know what I mean? Um, and so I am super proud of them. I am super proud of how um, big they became and how successful it was. And there's a little part of me that's really proud of myself that I got to be part of that in the beginning. And it's 
it's it's a really cool feeling you guys it's really cool and it's weird to think that that is now like 20 years ago because i don't feel that old <laughs> so anyways you guys that is my story about being a designer for lululemon so if you guys have any questions about that leave them below and i will get to them and i will answer your questions about designing for lululemon make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos i have all sorts of kind of videos uh coming out all the time i'm trying to upload three times a week so stay tuned for that and like this video if you guys like these story time videos and i will talk to you guys later bye